basketball, I think I associate just so much with who I am. It's like defining like what basketball means to me. It means so much. Like, it's been such an integral part of my life. I think for me, it's kind of like part of my identity. Uh, to me, basketball is kind of a way of life, as cliche as that sounds. Basketball is just, is just who I am. It's what I do. The Queens Varsity women's basketball team is sitting in second place in the OUA Eastern Conference with a record of 16 and three. They're coming off of a 20 point win at York against the Lions on Friday, but it's a new week and it's time to get to work starting with Monday afternoon practice. There's, there's always something unique about every team that you have. This is, a, this is a, another really great group. Um, I'm, I'm very proud and pleased of the chemistry that they've developed over time here as we've grown this team together. Um, how they work together and I think it actually bodes really well for them moving forward in their lives. With Dave, um, he's taught me a lot about how to be uh, a leader. He's been an excellent mentor for me. Um, he always has an open door so he's always there to help if you need. He's just, he's a really approachable person and he's taught me a lot about how to be that for other people. Why did I get involved with basketball? Um, honestly, I, I, I'm a teacher at heart. The, the sport of basketball, I thought, provided a, a really good opportunity to be a vehicle to teach other things. James Bambury is my full-time assistant, so he handles a great deal of the film work, um, scouting and all of that we do there, and then a lot of the teaching that we do as well. Bob Freeman's an assistant coach, part-time. He does a lot of work with uh, the bigs. Um, he also does some film work on uh, inbound plays and things like that that help us out. And then new this year, we have an apprentice coach, uh, Nicole Bernard, so she's in her first year, um, and she's working her way up the ranks to, to become a basketball coach, so she's just started out with us at this point. After practice, some of the players stick around to work on their shots, including sisters Sarah and Megan Saftich. Playing with Megan is, it was interesting when we first started. We never played together when we were younger because we're two years apart, so it was just kind of, never worked out. It's definitely been interesting to like see her grow and be able to experience it together is like something we can have for the rest of our lives. For the players that can't make the strength and conditioning session later, they get their training in now. And on Monday night, the rest of the team takes part in the first strength and conditioning session of the week. Typical strength and conditioning session, usually we come in and we have a little of a prehab that we call it, so we do little stretches and stuff like that. And then we get our interns that are very talented, they'll run us through a warm up. And then once we get into the lift, we'll have um, two or three main lifts um, that usually take up to about an hour. We have like a online, yeah, it's, it's like an app, and there's like our, our weight session for the day is like pre programmed into it. And we finish off with some stretching. Rise up, raise your feet! Just down the hall from the varsity gym and the basketball court, third year post and leading scorer Veronica Laverne plays ping pong with her buddy Oceana. So I volunteer with this program called um, the Autism Mentorship Program. We get paired up with uh, a child in the community who has autism and we just kind of hang out with them once or twice a week for a couple hours just to kind of like, help them build, uh, I guess, their social skills. And so uh, I was paired up with this girl Oceana, she's 12, uh, through this program and because she likes basketball, I like basketball, uh, we hang out once a week and she's really awesome. In the afternoon, Veronica is joined by fourth year guard Marianne O'Leary as they walk over to Central Public School to play with some kids after school. Uh, we go once a week, every Tuesday, um, just for about an hour and uh, we just kind of run through, run through a little practice with the, for them with you know, some layup drills and dribbling drills and just kind of offer them the, opp the opportunity to play the game. It's just nice to kind of put a smile on their face and um, it kind of makes you realize how fun the game can be, like it kind of makes you realize why you loved it in the first place. After playing at Central Public School, Veronica, Marianne and Sarah arrive at the gym to join their teammates for another practice. It's six in the morning and while many students are asleep, Sarah and her housemate Abby Dixon head to practice. Going to those early morning practices is tough, but um, by the end of the day, it is nice to have them out of the way. It gets you up, it gets you moving. I'm not a morning person, so waking up for early morning practice isn't ideal. We try to have a buddy system where if we haven't heard from anyone and 
it's getting close to practice time, we'll make sure to call them. And uh, I've cut it close a few times <laughs> in my time here. Coach Wilson prepares the team for full court four on four, but in their first run through, Marianne gets elbowed in the face and it appears to be serious. So I cut my lip in three different places and I uh, had to get three stitches, so I had to head over to the hospital at about seven in the morning and just closed my lip up a little bit and then came back and worked out at 10, so everything was good. <laughs> Icing her ankles, second year guard Emma Ritzy, and sitting next to her is first year guard Natalie DeMaio, who was joined on the team by her sister Julia. We've played basketball together since grade three. We've always been on the same teams. We're basically inseparable, so it's nice that we're um, able to go through this experience together. It's just, it's, it's annoying sitting on, like, on the bike or on the bench and just watching from the sidelines as opposed to being able to actually play, but um, so that's definitely the biggest struggle so far. As the coaches look on, the team works on their shooting from their weak points on the floor. Coach Wilson then calls for the team to run four and four offense with a shortened shot clock. After practice, half of the team does their strength and conditioning training, while the other half does their training in the afternoon. It can often be forgotten that varsity athletes are also students, and academics are equally, if not more important, than athletic performance. After her strength and conditioning training, Mary Ann heads to class. It's actually really hard being a student athlete. I think uh, we're actually not given enough credit for what we have, we've got to do. It's almost like a part-time job or an extra course every week. Like we spend 24 hours a week either in the gym or doing film. My academics are very important to me and the big thing has been getting ahead on a lot of my work. Um, I am like to be organized and it kind of puts my stress level down so I can be more uh, prepared for my games. So I just like to plan ahead and just get everything done as soon as possible. It's another early start for the Gales as they shuffle in for a film session reviewing their opponent for tomorrow's game the University of Toronto Varsity Blues. Assistant coach James Bambury leads the first half of the session, going over the strengths and weaknesses of each player. His main focus is on stopping Blues guard Kiera Parks, who leads the league in three-point field goal percentage, shooting 50.6% from beyond the arc. Once she gets inside the key, we got to expect either passes or floaters. Rarely does she get all the way to the rim and almost never with her left hand. Coach Wilson takes over the second half of the session, reviewing their opponent's offensive sets. Right, so there's the screen, they don't communicate, they got two going to here, slip the post, okay, and again, shooter sitting in the corner. After their film session, the players let loose at the beginning of practice. Uh, we just have a lot of fun. It's, it's so fun every day going into the team room and everybody's in there, music playing and everyone singing and laughing. It's, it's so nice just to go in and know that you have a community. <laughs> Our team chemistry is, and cohesion is better than any team in the CIS, I would say that 100%. My team has really pushed me to come out of my comfort zone and, and become who I am today and it's just, I look forward to getting on the floor and getting into the weight room and just seeing them. In this practice, Coach Banbury brings in some guys to run the offensive sets of the Blues against the Gales. He quickly teaches them the sets and practice gets underway. Former varsity men's player Ian Reed is brought in to emulate the style of Toronto sharpshooter Kira Parks, firing deep shots whenever given even a little bit of space. At the halfway point of practice, the Gales take their turn running their offense. And with 10 minutes left in practice, the Gales run their offense under full court pressure. Rise up! After practice, Marianne gets some extra shots up, while first-year post Sophie de Goody takes on Veronica for a game of post-up one-on-one. One-on-one post Indy is a big uh, rivalry between Dre, V, and I. We do it uh, every Thursday after our scrubs, and um, yeah, I never lose. I always win those games, so. Um, I don't have much of a rivalry, really. I think they're gunning for me, but um, no, it's a good time. What do you think of that? Two or one? Um, 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> 
tonight the Gales, ranked number eight in U Sports, will host the Toronto Varsity Blues. Blues come in with a record of seven and 12. They sit in the sixth and final playoff spot in the OUA East. The Blues have a tendency to play very well in this building against the Gales. So Parks obviously is playing phenomenally well. I mean, I haven't seen a kid put the kind of numbers up that she's putting up right now. So um, no excuses, six feet beyond the three-point line. It, we can't have the hands down and we can't be sitting off or waiting to see if she's going to jack it because um, she's shooting the ball very well. Yes, she does attack, but at least that gives us an opportunity to bring some other people at her and in particular know who's a slug on the floor. Okay, so three things here, calm, aggressive execution versus their pressure, box, grab, and move on the rebounds, and then take away any success they have. They can't be beaten the same way twice here. Thanks. Good job, buddy. After being beaten by the Blues in a key game last year, third-year post Miriam Fontaine gives a speech to her teammates to help get them inspired to get the win this time around. Let's just step on the floor and dictate and make them wish that they never came to Kansas City for this game. Yeah! yeah. Starting for the Gales are guards Emma Ritzy, Marion O'Leary, and Abby Dixon, and posts Sophie DeGoody and Andrea Priamo. Usual starter Veronica Laverne sits out the first quarter as punishment for arriving late to yesterday's film session. The Gales win the tip, but can't convert on their first possession as DeGoody commits an offensive foul. Throughout the first quarter, the Gales continually give up second chance points by allowing the Blues to get inside the paint with ease, as Nada Radonich lays it up and in. And a few plays later, Rashida Atkinson does the same. Even 5'1 Kira Parks is allowed in the paint for a score. On the other end of the floor, DeGoody gets the first points of the game for the Gales with a strong post move and puts in work on the defensive end. Stolen by DeGoody. DeGoody, Knowles trying to catch up. Missed the layup, got her own rebound and scored, and Michelle Belanger's irate. With two seconds left in the first quarter, the Gales have time for one last shot. Conti, two left. Fired up by Ritzy, got it at the buzzer! At the beginning of the second quarter, Atkinson catches fire from three. Can't get it inbounds, just due to Atkinson for three, got it! How about that? While on the other end, Fontaine hits some deep shots of her own. Fontaine along two, got it. Fontaine for three, Miriam Fontaine! At the end of the half, the Gales are down 12 points, and in the locker room, they talk it over. I think our bench and people on the floor can be louder in general. Like, they're getting super excited, they have more energy than us, and I hate that. So, let's, let's bring up the intensity and yeah. get into this game. We have a lot of shots, we have good shots we want. Um, if it's the first shot that's there and it's a good shot, just take it. Um, defensive discipline. Right? We've had the ball dead I don't know how many times, and we are looking over our shoulder to see the ball and lose our check. Okay? We've given up 43 points and a half. Okay, here we go. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Rise up. Let's go to Kings. Kings. Our half. Here we go. Our half. Let's go down. Here we go. Come on. Get it up. All right, James, obviously not an optimal first half. Uh, what are your thoughts in the first 20 minutes? They made a lot of shots. Um, no, I think they came out of, uh, as the aggressor. I think we were kind of caught back a little bit, and uh, we, we really didn't rebound the ball as well as we normally do. At the beginning of the second half, it's the Gales who start to dominate in the paint, with Laverne getting an offensive rebound putback, and Alary laying it in for an and one. Again, the Gales play poor defense in the quarter, allowing Radonich to get easy points in the paint. And they don't close out properly on Atkinson at the three-point line as she banks in a three-pointer. The score heading into the fourth quarter is 55 to 49 for the Blues. The Gales collect some more second chance points to start the fourth quarter as the Goody records her 17th point of the game. And a few minutes later, 
the Gales take their first lead of the game on an Abby Dixon putback. With 45 seconds on the clock, Parks hits a clutch shot. Parks, great crossover! And rolls it in! Timeout, Gales! Coach Wilson takes a timeout and draws up a play for DeGoody. Want to bring the ball across here. Soaks are going to be on this side here, Gray on this side. Guards, wait till uh, Soaks can get the ball ready here. DeGoody turns, drives, got Radonich in the air, and Radonich fouled her. Tied at 76 with 15 seconds left, the Blues put the ball in Atkinson's hands. Atkinson drives, puts it up and scores! Timeout, Gales! In this timeout, with four seconds left on the clock, Coach Wilson draws up a play for a Larry. Go to the rim, and then Larry, you're popping out the top. So we have two looks out of this, right? A Larry's open for the lead. No! Rebound, Parks! She'll be fouled with 2.9 left, and the Blues are two main free throws away from finishing off this upset. The Blues take the game by a score of 79 to 76. The Gales shut down Parks, but Atkinson stepped up to lead her team to victory. What happened in the second half when we decided, oh shoot, we can just go at these kids, we can stop these kids, we can play defense, we can get in their face. We shut them down. Not offensively, but like their flow, their tempo, everything disappeared. They ended up hitting some shots down the stretch. Um, so let's get to, let's get some rest, uh, fluids, food, all that stuff done tonight. I know you got uh, family and stuff in town, but let's be conscious of, of rest. Rise up. Okay, so obviously it's an up and down game. Uh, you guys within reach. Uh, just your thoughts on today's game. Well, very disappointing start to the game. Uh, I thought our offense was moving the ball well, getting the ball into the right position, but we finished horribly. So obviously an up and down game, uh, tough loss, but you guys clawed back. Uh, what are your thoughts on today's game? Um, obviously Toronto's a great team. Uh, we knew that that wasn't going to be an easy matchup, and so um, we tried to come into this game with a lot of focus, but we just didn't have it for the first half. So. Um, we were able to pick it up in the second half, but we have to put together a full 40 minutes to be able to beat a team like that. The focus of today's film session is on Ryerson Post Sophia Pasca, who is second in OUA scoring with 21.2 points per game. Whoever is covering Pasca stays covering Pasca. Okay? We are going to double immediately. Anytime she's in the paint below the bottom of the dotted circle. After their film session, the players shoot around for an hour. The guards work on their shooting on one end, while the bigs work on their post moves on the other all while second-year wing Bridget Mulholland looks on from the sidelines with a torn plantar fascia. Yeah, it's just tough as, you know, you're sitting on the, sitting on the sidelines, um, you know, days turns to weeks, turns to months, and you always think like, oh, it's the next day that I'm going to get cleared and it's, it's going to be fine. Um, and then to know it's not, it's just hard. In the locker room before the game, Coach Wilson goes over the team's three keys to winning tonight. Okay, so take pride in your defense, both individually and as a team. Um, number two, take care of the basketball. Okay, so reduce the turnovers, gives us more shot opportunities. Um, we're in good shape. So simple things. Don't don't make life really complicated out of this. And then the the third thing, understand effort overcomes talent. Okay, effort overcomes talent. But when we put talent and effort together, we become great. We have the talent. Let's make sure that we have the effort that's going to overcome them. This game starts out just like the last with the Gales giving up an offensive rebound putback. This time, it's Rams forward Jamma Ben Edward. On the other end, Larry knocks down a three. The Gales continue to get bullied in the paint as Bronwyn Williams gets the basket. And Kara Tiemens hits the short range jumper. While her teammates are dominating the paint, Pasca decides to step outside and calmly hits the three. The Rams back up their offense with some strong defense as the Goody gets blocked, but she comes back a few plays later with some strong defense of her own. Mago will try and catch her. The Goody count the hoop and the foul. Again, on the defensive end, the Rams get easy buckets inside. In the second quarter, the Rams keep coming, opening the frame with a triple from Marin Scott. On offense, Andrea Priamo responds. Priamo, that's for three, got it! 
Up top, Priamo. This time she'll drive on Fraser and put in the layup. Near the end of the quarter, Ben Edward pads Ryerson's lead. Can she get a shot off? She does, and got it! Gets a pick from Pasca. Long two, got it. Down 21 points at the half, the Gales try to figure out what went wrong. It'll come. It'll come. You just have to believe it, okay? I think we're having moments. We're playing really, really good defense for 22 seconds. They get a shot, and then they get an offense rebound. 45 points. Way too much. Have some pride in our defense, like Dave said. We've done this before. We were down this amount to Mac, and we chip away. And we chip away. Let's go. Here we 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 go. And what are you looking for for the next 20 minutes? Obviously, you need a little bit more pushing uh, up close in the glass. Uh, really, we just want the girls to continue to work hard and you know get after all the loose balls and take care of the things that we can control. In the third quarter, the Gales start to chip away at the Ryerson lead. Abby Dixon makes an impact from everywhere on the floor, getting a steal and a layup hitting the short range jumper, and on the defensive end, taking a charge. The Rams answer with a two from Pasca, and a three from Ben Edward. But the Gales make a statement to end the third quarter. Ritzy for three, got it! The Gales head into the fourth down 15 points. The Gales continue to mount the comeback, getting buckets inside from DeGoody and Laverne. Dixon continues making her presence known, knocking down a mid-range jumper and making a full-court pass to a Larry for the easy lay-in. Ritzy gets the floater to go, and the Gales have tied it up. The Gales take a two-point lead, but during their final defensive stand, they let it slip away. Edward can't get it up, does count it at the buzzer of the shot clock! With 1.9 seconds left on the clock, the Gales have a shot to win the game. Priamo shoots at the buzzer in and out. We're going to play five more minutes. In overtime, Pasca gives the Rams a three point lead with the layup. And on the offensive end, the Gales turn it over multiple times. Tiemens hits a huge three pointer to put the Rams up eight with a minute and a half to go. DeGoody goes on a run of her own, hitting a three-pointer and getting fouled, but it's too little too late for the Gales. Down five with 15 seconds to go, Riamo misses the layup and hits the ground hard. Aleri commits the foul on Tiemens and that does it for the game. The Gales lose to the Rams 82 to 75, but get a standing ovation from the crowd which is filled with the parents of the Gales. After the game, the players watch on as 5th year Gales Sarah Saftich, Abby Dixon, and Andrea Priamo are honored in their last regular season home game. The three are the all-time winningest Gales in the history of the program. In the locker room, the Gales reflect on the loss. Anything we're taking away from this one? We just said we gotta find a way to play in the first half like we can't, like we do in the second half, or like we have been in the second half. Congratulations to the Sarah and Dre and Abby. Um, as being the all-time winningest basketball players. <laughs> by a long shot. I was really proud by the fact that we got punched in the face, we stood up and started swinging. I was, I was ridiculously proud. I would just like to be the first one to throw that punch. Rise up. What's working? Please use face. Obviously, pretty similar trend to yesterday. Um, going to the playoffs, what does this teach you about this team right now? Well, uh, you know, you always look for the positives. You want to see what you can improve, but you look for the positives. And the positives are the resiliency. I mean, to be down 21 uh, and to be able to chip away and chip away and bring that back and, and keep your head high on that, I think that's really important. And, and that shows them that regardless of what the lead is, we have the ability to come back against it. And I think that's the most important thing we'll take away from it. So obviously a tough two games this weekend uh, tonight. You've had a good game. Um, what do you think tonight? I mean, we said in halftime we wanted to come out and put up a fight, and I think we did. It's just unfortunate that we couldn't keep it going in the in the overtime. And I mean, we have it. We just need to go into the next 
uh, set of games next weekend and do it for 40 minutes and not just half the game, and I think we'll be fine in going into playoffs. With the parents in town, the Gales hold a banquet dinner honoring the work put in by the fifth-year players. Gales post Maddie Morris and Marianne give a speech to the fifth-year players, but lighten the mood with a few jokes first. What is Forrest Gump's password? What is it? I don't know. Uh, one Forrest One. Oh! Oh! The fifth year players then thank their teammates and the coaching staff for everything that they've done for them. And lastly, they thank each other. You're both going to accomplish so much and Queens is only a stepping stone for, stepping stone for the heights you guys can reach. <laughs>